I'll call the member for one and thanks, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And I rise here tonight to support the motion that's been put, which is calling on the government to give the people a say. Now we've seen through the government's actions today that they do not want to give the Australian people a say. We've had a group of people come to Canberra from across Australia to voice their opinion. And what is the reaction they've got from this government? From the Minister for Transport, this has been nothing but a convoy of no consequence. And from the leader of the Greens, their moaners and whingers. What arrogance! What arrogance from this government, from this Labor Greens government. And it's interesting that it has been the Minister for Transport and the Leader of the Greens who have done a double act in condemning people who came to Canberra to have a say. Because this is a Labor Greens government. And that is why we have a carbon tax. And those opposite are saying that this motion is all about negativity. It's not about negativity. It's actually about saving the Prime Minister's credibility. It's giving her the option to say, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. I shouldn't have deceived the Australian people before the last election. I shouldn't have misled them. I shouldn't have spoken untruth. And I should have the courage to come before you and say, I'm sorry that I deliberately deceived you. And I want to make amends. I want to give you the chance to say whether or not you want this carbon tax or not. The Prime Minister could restore some of her badly, badly broken credibility by agreeing to this motion, by allowing us to go to a referendum. And the referendum would simply say, it's not a political trick, the referendum would simply say, do you support the government's plan to introduce a price on carbon to deal with climate change? Fairly reasonable, sensible question. I don't think anyone could say that it's any way politically loaded. The Prime Minister could restore her credibility by putting that question to the Australian people by saying, I know you're angry. I know that you will drive thousands and thousands of miles from across the country to come here to Canberra to say, give us a say. We won't treat you with contempt. We won't call you a convoy of no consequence, a bunch of moaners and whingers. We'll give you more respect than that. We'll give you the respect that you deserve. We will give you a say. We'll admit that we misled, that we deceived, that we deliberately told you something before an election and then did the exact opposite after an election. So it is a real shame that the government once again won't take up this very positive contribution to political debate in this country. This is a positive contribution because it is giving the Prime Minister a chance, a chance to say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have deceived, I am now going to do the right thing. And the people of Wannan, in my electorate, want her to do that because everything they learn about this carbon tax worries them to the bone. We've got the operator of our regional airline out saying that this is going to have a real consequence to their business because they cannot pass the costs on to the people who will fly on their airline. They're going to have to absorb the costs and they are struggling as it is. We have regional manufacturers and I'll give you two examples. These are regional manufacturers in the town of Ararat who are actually doing things to reduce carbon emissions, who are manufacturing equipment 
that leads to the reduction in emissions. You've got Gayson Engineering, who are producing cedars, which direct seed into the earth, so they don't require a lot of tillage. They're minimum tillage. And what is the response of this government to a manufactured technology reducing emissions in my electorate? They're going to be hit with more costs so they can't compete with imports from Canada or China. You've got AME Systems who are doing the same for Kenworth Trucks, providing technology which reduces emissions. And what's the government's response to them? Hit them with more costs. So once again, it makes them harder to compete with the manufacturing of this equipment which is occurring in China. What sort of government's response to manufacturing industries who are providing and producing low emission technology would be to say, we're going to put your costs up? Look at our farmers who are competing with a high Australian dollar, who have to export. What's going to happen to them? We've seen a dairy farmer in my electorate will, case, will face costs, minimum costs, of five to seven thousand dollars. More likely to be in the ten to fifteen thousand range, but at a minimum five to seven thousand dollars of annual cost put on their business, and they have to compete internationally. Grain growers, average farm, thirty-six thousand dollars of additional cost put on them. And what about for our meat processors? 24 to 30 cents per carcass. These are the additional costs being put on our rural industries. They've got nowhere to go. They have to absorb them. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, these people want a voice. They want to say, when they voted before the last election, they didn't think they were voting. To, for a government that was going to put additional costs on them. They didn't know that the choice they had was on one side a government was going to put extra costs on their business and on one side the other, because the Prime Minister had said quite plainly, and it's never ever been disputed, there will be no carbon tax under the government I lead. Now there's been all sorts of Houdini like twists to try and get out of that, but that is the language, those are the words that were spoken. Now there's been talk about, oh well, it was a different parliament than the one beforehand, and oh, we had to form a government, so of course what I said before the election doesn't count for what I said after. What a load of hogwash. It was very clear what the Prime Minister said before the last election, and it's very clear what she's doing now. And people want to say. They want to be able to say, we made the decision to introduce or not to introduce this carbon tax. And that is what we are here discussing tonight, why they should be given that choice, why they should be able to vote in a plebiscite on the very simple question, do you support the government's plan to introduce a price on carbon to deal with climate change? Not a trick question, it's a very simple question. I know the people of my electorate want to have the chance to vote. And I know that there are other honourable members in this place too are putting their hands up who want that chance. So I call on the Prime Minister to restore her credibility, to just take a decision which will say to the Australian people, once again, you can believe in your political leaders. Once again, you can look them in the eye and know when they say something that what they are saying is the honest truth. Because sadly, at this moment, the office of Prime Minister is there and is being undermined on a daily basis by the fact that the Prime Minister said one thing before the election and did another thing after. This is her chance.
to redeem that, to redeem the office of Prime Minister in this country. I hope those opposite will take that chance Order. and vote for this motion. Order.